37. War. The forward hangar bay is massive, a giant cave in the belly of my ship crawling with men and women of all colors, 600 meters in length. Along its left side are hundreds of spit tubes. Each row is accessed by a network of giant causeways where men in star shells can walk. Thousands stand ready to disperse, grouped according to legion. The alarm for battle stations warbles throughout the ship. Orion's voice rasps over the intercom. Beyond the hall, Roke, now the youngest imperator in a hundred years, will be breaking our armada into fleets to engage the Bologna over Mars. Squadrons of ripwings and wasps pour forth. Blues flying to their deaths. Gold squad leaders in their midst. All to carve a hole large enough for the leechcraft to swarm onto the enemy hulls. Some praetors hoard their soldiers to fight off enemy waves that make it aboard their ships. Others launch full attack. It's a gamble either way. Can't think of it. Victor, Roke, and Orion have that responsibility. I have my own. I pause, looking out at the hangar. What if Ares isn't real? I ask several quietly. What the hell are you talking about? Several asks. What if it's just a gold trick? Someone pulling strings to make society go the way they need it to go. What if it's all a lie? Several looks at me for a long moment. Then he hops up on a banister and howls at the top of his lungs down at the hangar bay. The bay howls back. It comes from greys. It comes from obsidians, from oranges. It comes from reds working on tubes. And it comes from the gulls who requested transfer to my ship. That's no lie. And that's when I see the standards of the legions fall, replaced with something new. Gone are the pyramids of the society. Gone are the laurel and the scepter and the sword and the scroll. Gone is Augustus's lion. Instead, the high golden standard that legions carry to battle are peaked with wolves and sling blades. These legions are mine. I feel something buzzing in those around me. A sort of physical fanaticism. It did not buzz in the golds quite like this. The golds love me because of the victory and glory I bring. These other colors love me for something far different. Something far more potent. Any other conquering gold would have vented the ship. But I did not. Because they chose me instead of the golds who once were their masters. I gave them that chance. Several grips my arm. Do you understand that you must fight differently today? I get it, Several. I try to shake off his hand. You don't. He pulls me to look at him and shoes Ragnar back. Every move you make today will be recorded and broadcast to every part of the solar system. This battle is to make the fleet yours. His voice drops to a harsh whisper. The suns will spread it. Jackal will spread it. House Augustus will spread it. Act like a god and get followed like a god. Register? Win or lose, this is still Augustus' fleet, I say. Not if he's dead. I assign several to infiltrate the citadel in Aegea, where the arch governor is being held captive. But I did not tell him to kill Augustus. You're not going to kill him, I say with authority. I forbid it. It is necessary. You don't need his legitimacy. Haven't you figured this out yet? Here, you get what you take, no matter the right of it. He spits on the ground. You are twenty years old. If you win Mars, Darrow, you become a living god. And so when you reveal what you really are, you transcend color. Do I register? Severo has grown wiser since we first met. No doubt about that. But I fear he thinks too much of me. Apollo thought he was a god. Augustus thinks he is. A god is not what I should be. A god is something to serve. Something to worship. I've never wanted that. Eo never wanted that. Several will have to learn. This is about freedom. Yet it seems like everyone just wants to follow. Mustang oversees the troop operations today. 
She floats through the air with Milia, the horse-faced girl we adopted at the Institute. Nearer me saunters an ambling, pitiless gold with a familiar face. I laugh and point him out to several, who curses poignantly. Proctor Jupiter, I call to the man. Darling, could that really be you? Who else would it be, you uppity brat? Jupiter comes before me. He's tall, careless in the eyes, hair bound tight, half a foot taller than I. He's a sinful, hedonistic beast of a man, with an arrogant streak a kilometer long. And it is clear that he and Ragnar are two misunderstandings away from the opening of each other up. He eyes the razor wrapped around my forearm, and I see his worn in the same new fashion. I heard you're the one responsible for the new style. He holds up his arm. I do approve. Bold as a naked prick in an ant nest. Limping still? Severo asks. Shut up, goblin, Jupiter sneers. Daddy dearest had a little duel with Proctor Jupiter here to win the Rage Knight post. Several smiles. Old man sliced him up the same place I did. Right in the ass. That slippery slag fitch nice. Tricky. Jupiter nods grudgingly. Very, very tricky. I have been helping the lady. Jupiter rumbles on, gesturing to Mustang. How so? I ask. Most of the Augusta cities are on a communication interdict. We can't get a word out or in. I'm the emissary to those still loyal. Sneak in, sneak out. Been doing it for weeks now and sending word to remote drop caches in the other loyal cities. A whole war has been going on here with her agents and her brothers while you were out stitching together a fleet. It's been nasty, my good man. So what can you tell me? I ask. Well, Daddy Bologna commands the house fleet against your friends. Cassius and Carnus have been allocated to ground operations inside Aegea. I am going to help you find them and kill them. Jupiter raises his large eyebrows, as though telling us how tedious he finds the chore. That is the point. Kill the Bologna family members and all their allies will suddenly wonder why they're fighting. Isn't it? He winks at several. Next best thing to pounding that loon-born sovereign's head in. You sure all Bologna are in Aegea? Jupiter nods grudgingly. Last we saw. That was a couple of days ago, though. After they brought Augustus down in chains. He airily holds up a finger. And there was a peculiar series of heavy shuttles that landed last night. I wave a hand, ignoring mention of the shuttles. He squints at me but I tell him to shut up and get behind me as I meet Mustang and her entourage. Everything is prepared, she says. We're awaiting launch orders. She wrinkles her nose, as if smelling something foul. Several, do watch Jupiter. He tends to shit where he eats. Jupiter yawns. Pleasure working with you, too. Melia, lovely seeing you washed, I say. Reaper? Still playing with skies? Warms the heart. You've a heart, several chuckles. She examines his height. A full-sized one. She pauses. I saw Pollux just yesterday. On the other side, however. Been sneaking in and out with Jupiter here. You've arranged us all a little reunion. I heard about Tactus. He was a bastard. True enough. I glance at my datapad. We'll be at the launch coordinates in five. My team disperses. Mustang lingers, face thoughtful. What's what? I ask. Worrying about me already? A little, she confines, coming close enough for me to smell the scent of her. But it's my father. What if they kill him before we even make landfall? They won't kill him. They'll need him as a bargaining chip, or they've lost. They'll spare him and hope we do the same for all the Bologna family members. You don't kill men as important as him. I reach for her hand to comfort her, but she pulls it away, turning from me. We have a planet to invade. I watch her go, shouting orders to her men.